Hello everyone, my name is Miss Morris and I will be reading chapter seven of Mr. Popper's Penguins. Chapter seven is called Captain Hook Builds a Nest. There are some vocabulary words in this chapter that I wanna make sure we are all familiar with. Those words are idle, located on page 44, and this simply means not moving. Next, we have prowled, located on 44. Move around in a sneaky way to look for something. And I have a picture of a cat because cats are always on the prowl. They're so sneaky. Astonishment, this is located on page 45. And this is simply being surprised. All right, then we move over to slug also located on page 45, and this means a counterfeit coin or a fake coin. Darn is repair a garment by weaving thread across a hole. Now this is a picture of a darn and women used to put uh, socks around this darn so that they could see the hole better in the sock and they were able to mend it and neatly do so. Rookery, page 47. This simply means nest. And it's kind of neat because that's in our title, right? Strutting, page 47. This is walking around proudly like you want to impress someone. All right, let's begin reading. Well, if you're following along in the book, uh, chapter seven, it starts on page 43. If not, just sit back and enjoy listening to me read. Chapter seven, Captain Cook builds a nest. Very re reluctantly, Janie and Bill had to leave Captain Cook and go to school. Mrs. Popper was busy in the kitchen, rather belatedly doing the breakfast dishes. And while she dimly realized that the penguin was going in and out of the refrigerator pretty frequently, she thought nothing of it at first. Meanwhile, Mr. Popper had abandoned his telephoning and was now very busy shaving and making himself neat in honor of being the owner of such a splendid bird as Captain Cook. But the penguin, though thus neglected for the moment, was by, all, no, by no means idle. With the unusual excitement and having to go to market earlier than usual, Mrs. Popper had not yet got around to straightening the house. Oh, she was an excellent housekeeper, still with two children, like Janie and Bill, and a husband with such untidy ways. There is no denying the fact that she had to pick up the place rather frequently. Captain Cook was now attending to the picking up. Into the corners of every room, he prowled and poked and pecked with a busy thoroughness. Into every closet, he stared with his white circled eyes under and behind all the furniture, he crowded his plump figure with little subdued cries of curiosity, surprise, and pleasure. And each time he found what he seemed to be looking for, he picked it up in the black end of his red beak and carried it, waddling proudly on his wide pink feet into the kitchen and into the ice box. At last, it occurred to Mrs. Popper to wonder what on earth that busy bird was up to. When she looked, she could only scream to Mr. Popper to come quickly and to see what Captain Cook had done now. Mr. Popper, himself looking rather remarkable, as Mrs. Popper noticed later, joined her in staring with astonishment. 
into the refrigerator, Captain Cook came up too and, and, and helped him look. Ork, ork, he said with triumph. Mrs. Popper laughed and Mr. Popper gasped as they saw the results of Captain Cook's trips through the house. Two spools of thread, one white chest bishop, and six parts of a jigsaw puzzle. A teaspoon and a closed box of safety matches, a radish, two pennies, a nickel, and a golf ball two pencil stubs, one bent playing card, and a small ashtray. Five hairpins, an olive, two dominoes, and a sock. A nail file, four buttons of various sizes, a telephone slug, seven marbles, and a tiny doll's chair. Five checker pieces, a bit of a graham cracker, a parshi cup and an eraser, a door key, a button hook, and a crumpled piece of tinfoil, half of a very old lemon, the head of a china doll, Mr. Popper's pipe, and a ginger ale, ale cap, an ink bottle cork, two screws, and a belt buckle, six beads from a child's necklace, five building blocks, a darning egg, a bone, a small harmonica, and a partly consumed lollipop. Now, I don't know about you boys and girls, but when I get a lollipop, I eat the whole thing. Two toothpaste lids and a small red notebook. Well, I guess this is what you call the rookery, said Mr. Popper, only he couldn't find any stones to build his nest with. Boys and girls, what he means by that is the type of penguins that are in Mr. Popper's penguins are called gentoos. And these type of penguins will make an indentation in the sand or the ground that they're in with their nails. And then they will build nests of small stones that are uh, used to line depressions on the ground. And so it looks like one big rock pile when they're done. The reason for this, boys and girls, is because the um, rookery that is around the nest will sometimes get flooded and the stones will prevent their nest from flooding. Well, said Mrs. Popper, those penguins may have heathened ways at the South Pole, but I declare I think this, is one, this one is going to be quite a help around the house. Well, I think that with all those things that Captain Hook, Cook found around the house, I'm kind of glad that he's a penguin that likes to build nests and help Mrs. Popper out. Ork, said Captain Cook and strutting into the living room. He knocked over the best lamp. I think Papa, said Mrs. Mrs. Popper, that you had better take Captain Cook outside for a little exercise. Good gracious, but you're all dressed up. Why, you almost look like a penguin yourself. Mr. Popper had smoothed down his hair and shaved off his whiskers. Never again would Mrs. Popper have to reproach him for looking as wild as a lion. He had put on a white shirt with a white tie and a white flannel trousers and a pair of bright tan oxblood shoes. He got out of the cedar chest his old black evening tailcoat that he had been married in and brushed it carefully and put it on too. He did indeed look like a penguin. He turned and strutted like one now for Mrs. Popper. But he did not forget his duty to Captain Cook. Can I have a few yards of clothespin, please, Mama? 
asked Mr. Popper. Now, I'm just curious, what does he need clothesline for? And are we just going to leave that huge stack of rookery in the refrigerator? Hmm, what do you think, boys and girls? Let's review the chapter. So what we know is that Bill and Janie, they went to school and Mr. Popper was busy shaving because he has this urge or surge of pride about the ownership of the penguin that he has, Captain Cook. And Mrs. Popper is busy in the kitchen doing dishes. This allows Captain Cook the opportunity to wander around the house. He pecks into every nook and cranny and he finds a wide variety of junk and little knickknacks, which he brings back to the refrigerator in a nest building instinct. Everything from a chess piece to thread to coins to a partially consumed lollipop have been gathered. Now you know how I feel about that lollipop. Mrs. Popper is actually grateful since the bird has saved her effort from tidying up the house. I hope you enjoyed chapter seven. Thank you.